Hey guys, how you doing? Now I want to talk about RuneScape Gold Farmers. As you see, I'm on my Iron Man on uh, RuneScape 3, and I'm using uh, Legacy Mode. About to go kill some dragons. As you see, I got the Anti-Dragon Shield. I already got Dragon Slayer completed, so I'm going to get some levels up so I can use some rune on my Iron Man. And we're probably going to save up our money for a bond, you know, on my Iron Man, so I can, you know, use member content on it. So, yeah. Um, I'm currently looking for the wilderness. Do I have it unlocked? No. I don't have the wilderness unlocked. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pause this video until we can get to our dragons. And then... I'll talk about gold farmers, uh, you know, what the term is used for on RuneScape. Okay, the term gold farmer is mainly used um, as pretty much a person that sells RuneScape gold for real life money. Uh, that's pretty much what the term gold farmer means on RuneScape. And it's a major offense on the RuneScape's TOS, all right? It's like uh, right beside botting and stuff. It's a major offense, you know? Um, it's kind of looked at as worse than botting. So, yeah, now botting, uh, they look at it as a major offense as well because you're not really playing RuneScape, and uh, you're you're letting a third-party software play RuneScape for you. But gold farming, uh, some of them are bots, some of them aren't. Some of them play legitimately, and some of them don't. So yeah, some grind legitimately, some don't, and. There's some gold farmers that buy gold from other gold farming websites uh, and sell it for a higher profit. Now, on RuneScape 3, there's not really a lot of problems with gold farmers on RuneScape 3. Um, most of the gold farmers farm on old school RuneScape very much and yeah it's because old school runescape gold is far more it's far more wealthy than runescape 3 gold pretty much you know it's it costs more than runescape 3 gold so that's why a lot of gold farmers have transitioned to old school runescape And a lot of the gold farmers are Venezuelan. Uh, the reason why RuneScape is one of the most played MMOs in Venezuela is in Venezuela, a lot of people are poor and they're desperate to make money to put food on the table. So that's the reason why a lot of them play RuneScape. It's to gold farm. So the gold for, uh, I, I don't know what their currency is called, so I ain't really going to try to say it, but, you know, it makes them money that they can use to feed their families, and so on and so on. Now, do I care if people gold farm? I don't really care, you know. I mean, I say... Let people play the game how they want to play it. You know, if they get banned and if they get caught selling gold, then it's on them. Uh, that, that That's why I say, but I kind of think that RuneScape is a good thing for some people, you know, like gold farmers. Now, there are some gold farmers that are in China. Now, these people, 
They are wealthy. They are very, very wealthy. They make millions of dollars every year by selling uh, gold from other games like World of Warcraft and a lot of the Chinese gold farmers, they kind of transition to World of Warcraft and uh, sell World of Warcraft accounts and stuff like that. But there are some that do play RuneScape as well and Gold Farm RuneScape as well. And then you have the American gold farmers. The American gold farmers, they are far more wealthy than the Chinese gold farmers. All right. Far more wealthy. <laughs> um, that's just from what I heard. And that's just from, you know, talking to some people and what they do for a living and stuff like that. Uh, that's how I found out that the American gold farmers are far more richer than the Chinese gold farmers. And there's gold farmers all over the world trying to make money. Some of them, you know, some of them are desperate. They need the money to put food on the table because, you know, there are some countries that are like Venezuela where not a lot of people can afford food. and they need to play games in order they, to make their money, and it's kind of hard for them to get a job on where they're at. Uh, that's the reason why some people gold farm, is they're desperate for the money, and they really need it to feed their families. Now, am I saying... You should break the terms of service on RuneScape and Gold Farm. No, uh, I do not condone it, but play RuneScape how you want to play. If you, if you want to bot your time away, you know, spend no time on the game, really, because you're using a third-party software to do it for you. And if that's how you want to play the game, I say... Go ahead, but if you get caught, then, you know, you get caught. It's on you. Me, I don't buy, all right? I, I don't buy. Because I think, you know, botting, you wouldn't really be experienced within the game. Uh, you wouldn't be learning how to play the game. So, me, I play the game for fun not for wealth, like, you know, some people are doing, so, yeah, <clears throat> so, yeah, um, that's pretty much RuneScape Gold Farmers, and that's pretty much Gold Farmers in general, yeah, now, what do I think about it? Like, do I think it's bad or good? Well, for me, if someone is becoming wealthy and uh, if someone is becoming successful, you know, we're always taught in our lives that success is key. So, yeah, me, I, either way, I don't really. I don't really care, you know? I mean, it's good for some people, you know, that live in third world countries that can't really, you know, get jobs because jobs are not really available in their country. And then there's some that jobs are available in their country. It's just they want to be self-employed and they want to make their money by selling gold but g gold is not the only business that they're in account selling as well uh the gold farmers also sell runescape accounts and runescape accounts can be pretty pretty pricey yeah like it really depends on the stats like if you're a maxed main you could probably make a couple hundred dollars by selling a maxed main account 
or a peer would possibly cost you around eighty dollars, some shit like that. Yeah. So yeah, that yeah that that's pretty much the gold farming business right there. You know, uh, they benefit from both gold and account selling. You know, but me, I don't condone account selling either. You know. Me, uh, I'm, I don't sell accounts. All the accounts I make is, you know, for for my personal use, not for anyone else, you know. So, yeah. But let me tell you this. Buying a RuneScape account, um, now... Jagex, they can tell if the person has done no work on the account whatsoever. There's ways that they can they can tell that you made no effort on the account. One, you're logging on a different IP address than what the other user was logging on in. And two, if you are botting, they go by clicks, all right? Um, how many clicks you're doing? And plus, they can even tell on what client you're playing on. So if you're using a bot client, then yeah, you're most likely going to get banned. And your IP address is most likely going to get flagged for botting, you know? Because I've heard of people's IPs getting flagged for botting, and it's not blocking the IP address, it's just when they flag it, they kind of keep an eye on it for, I don't know, pr probably forever. I have no idea how long they keep their eyes on the flagged IPs, but Jagex, they have a lot of employees. And they can't keep their eyes on everyone because there's so many people playing RuneScape. So, you know, a lot of people are going to slip through. You know, a lot of people are going to make a lot of freaking money from, you know, playing RuneScape before Jagex even catches them. Because they're busy trying to, you know, ban the other people for it. And it's just impossible for them to watch everybody you know so yeah yeah killing dragons yeah there, there, there's no one here whatsoever like i can come here and have no risk of being pk'd but i do have a dungeoneering ring just in case Yeah, this ring I can teleport away if I if I get attacked. So yeah, it's not like the home teleport where you have to wait until you're done with combat to be able to teleport away. So yeah, that's why I brought the dungeoneering ring because it is still possible for me to get PK'd here, and this is just this is just for leveling up my prayer. Yeah. Like, I have no risk of being PK'd here. Well, who knows? Probably still possible, because I've actually seen people here before. Not really a lot of people. But, you know, every now and then I'll see someone here killing dragons. And usually when I'm on my main, if I have the opportunity, I would then, you know play the role of PKer, if you know what I mean. And I would kill them for their bones and stuff so I can make more money on RuneScape. Yep. And if you don't know, uh, Dragon Bones are free to play. Uh, and plus, dragons are free to play. As you see, I'm on world 8. 
And that is a free-to-play world. And I don't understand why not a lot of people come here. I mean, they can make a lot of money just by sitting here killing dragons. Well, a lot of these people are doing uh, smithing, you know, because the mining and smithing update. And, uh, you know, rune bars, they're going up and down in price. Uh, rune bars is like it, it fluctuates. It's like sometimes they'll go down in price. Same things with the ores. You know, you can buy ore from the Grand Exchange, and you can still make money from making rune bars. You know, you can always make money from making rune bars, because each time the rune bars drop, the um, ores that are required for it drops too. So, yeah. Um, smithing is something you can always make money from on RuneScape. And I've made mills doing the mining and smithing thing. Well, I mostly do the smithing if I'm making money. I only do the mining if I need to make armor. But I'm an Iron Man. Uh, I can't use the GE. So, pretty much what I do on here is I make my armor each time I level. And, yeah. I remember when I first got membership, this whole entire area was the most botted places on RuneScape. Yeah, I don't know if it still is, but who knows, once I get my membership, I'll probably see, you know? Like, I'll probably, who knows, I'll probably explore the wilderness and see where a lot of bots are in the wilderness and probably KO them. I know there's a lot in the uh, Cursed Energy place because Cursed Energies can make you millions. I mean, millions of gold and uh, there's a lot of gold farmers that are doing Cursed Energies because of that. I mean, there's still gold farmers on RuneScape 3, just not as much. It's just not a lot compared to what it used to be back in the day. Yeah, back when I was a kid. Now, when I was a kid, bots were everywhere. You couldn't go anywhere without seeing them. Like, they'd be in the fishing areas. They'd be chopping down the trees. I mean... Woodcutting was the most tedious skill because of, well, there was many skills that became tedious because of it. Because, you know, bots were just sitting there cutting the trees and, you know, you couldn't get any logs. You'd be sitting there for like a couple hours and you still ain't going to get any logs. Now, mining was the most tedious of them all because. The bots would go, be going back and forth, back and forth. I mean, there'd be more bots mining than any other skill. Because with mining, you used to make a lot more money. I mean, you would make a lot more money by mining back in the day. And, yeah. Like, if you wanted to make money back in the day, mining was the skill. But you would have to compete with all them gold farmers and all them botters and things like that. And, yeah, you know, me, that's the reason, you know, my mining was l low until the mining and smithing update. You know? Because it was just tedious, you know? It was very click intensive, and yeah. So, yeah.
But on Old School RuneScape, that problem has returned on Old School RuneScape. Yeah, me, I play Old School RuneScape off and on, and mining. Me, I mine in the PvP worlds because if I was to mine in the regular worlds, yeah. Yeah, the botters would be right there mining the ore. And I'd be sitting there for an hour not getting any, you know, ores. And, yeah. But PvP worlds, you could fill up within, like, a couple minutes. Because, you know, botters don't use PvP worlds on old school RuneScape. So, that would mean, you know, more money for you. And uh, you'd be bypassing the bots. Uh, that's just one way you can bypass them. And if they do appear in the PvP worlds, then, you know, like, have an account that can attack their accounts and then take all their ores that you're trying to get and then put them in your bank and sell them. Yeah. I'm stocking up on bones right now. Dragon bones. I remember in 2009, I used to go in these PvP worlds. Uh, back in 2009 of RuneScape, PvP worlds were filled. I mean, you'd have people in Lumbridge. You'd have... People in Varrock. I mean, Varrock was the most populated places in the PvP worlds on uh, on RuneScape 2009. Yeah, I mean, you could go, you could go to um, Varrock, and it would be dogpiled by a bunch of barragers. Yeah, I think they should make certain places on RuneScape on RuneScape you know, PKable, you know, like Varrock, you know, make Varrock a PvP area, you know, because all these bots are making millions of GP by mining and wood cutting. So, you know, if you make it a PvP area, then we could eliminate them bots and then you know, we'd be making we'd be making a lot of money. You know, people would be in there twenty four seven, and the bots would be losing money. Well, the gold farmers like that that that's one answer to your gold farming problem. You know, the gold farmers are there because it's safe. Now, if you make it a PvP area, that eliminates one place that a gold farmer would go to. And a lot more people would probably be active in that area. Because, you know, they'd be, one, they'd be wanting to mess up them gold farmers. Honestly, I would too. Uh, you know, for my RuneScape gold so I can buy more stuff. It's like, ah, I can't buy this. This is too much money. Oh, no problem. I can go to Varrock and kill a bunch of gold farmers, take their stuff, go to the bank, and then, you know, bank it, go back to them, um, you know, mining bots, and then, you know, do it all over again. Oh, yeah, and the flax picking fields. Yeah, there used to be so many bots at the flax picking fields. I mean, you, you'd go to pick flax, and all of a sudden, the flax picking fields would be filled with bots, and they'd be, be, they'd be doing the same thing you'd be doing, you know? But the thing is, they'd be doing it 24-7. Back in the day, they didn't get banned a lot. You know, not not a lot of them got banned back in the day. Because uh, back in the day, flax picking used to be 
one of the lowest ban rates, you know? Like, that's what I like to think, because back in the day, a lot of gold farmers picking flax. <sighs> yeah, like, I would be picking flax for a week, and I'd still see the same people picking the flax. Yeah, I remember what that used to be like, you know, like you'd be woodcutting and then wake up the next day, same person still there woodcutting. And then you wake up the next day, the person still hasn't been banned and he's still woodcutting. And the next thing you know, they gets an eye on woodcutting, he's still chopping. And yeah, yeah, that's one of the reasons why you logs went down in price you know you logs crashed so bad because of the bots <sighs> like you logs would be used to worth like 400 and something gp and now how much are they you know they're a bit more lower than what they used to be Yeah, well, I'm making this video a little too long. So, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to, you know, make this the content, you know, playing on my Iron Man. Because that's what I'm mainly playing on right now. I'm trying to get its stats up. Like, I'm trying to get uh, 50 attacks so I can you know, wear rune weapons, 50 defense for the armor, and yeah. Thirty-three prayer, nice. Too bad the gilded altar is not free to play. I mean if it was free to play, I'd be going to house parties, you know. Like, in the free-to-play areas, there'll probably be, like, house parties and stuff like that. And people making a lot of money from hosting the house parties. Alright. What can I do with 33 Prayer? Oh, I can join the monastery. Yeah. Uh, 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 mm, yeah, no, nothing new. You know, I can, like, this is only 25 prayer right here. The uh, little uh, protect item thing. Yeah. Protect from summoning. Yeah, I'd need like 35 for that, but I'm really going for like the overheads, you know, like the mage, the the range, and the uh, melee. You know, that's what I'm mainly going for in my prayer. So yeah. Anyways, guys, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Want to see more? Subscribe. Got anything for me? Leave a comment. Now, if you're a gold farmer on RuneScape, if you're a RuneScape gold seller or account seller, if you drank too much sweet tea, you're probably going to end up going out of business, you know, on your accounts and uh, your gold selling because all your accounts will be banned. And then you'd be losing a lot of money because then... A lot of people be going to your headquarters holding pitchforks going, ah, we want our money back. All of our accounts we bought from you got banned. Give us our money. Yeah. Anyways, guys. Bye.